for a discussion on the state of cyber threats to supply chains. I'm joined by Brian Alster. He is head of third-party risk and compliance solutions with Dun & Bradstreet. Hello, Brian. Hi, how are you, Bob? Great to be back. Good to speak with you again. Uh, Brian, would you just kind of give me a general statement? How would you describe the state of cyber threats to supply chains today? Uh, one word, increasing. Mm, okay. Uh, we, have, uh, we have an increasing frequency of attacks. We have an increasing severity of each attack. And then we also have uh, increasing costs associated with each breach. Mm -hmm. uh, a recent survey showed that 53% of companies, um, of responders, said that they had been breached and the result of the breach was due to a third party. In addition, the average cost to remediate those breaches is now crossing $8 million per time. Per time, per incident. Yes. Wow. Uh, what particular types of, of attacks are we seeing? Is there anything different from in the past? And what, 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 we should, be, what should we most be on the lookout for here? Yeah, I, I think that first and foremost, what we're learning is that every part of an organization is vulnerable. We're seeing attacks coming at multiple levels. We're seeing it where whole departments are impacted. We're seeing uh, people that are working remotely are now creating a greater risk to the company because of the, the, the nature of where they are. They're no longer plugged directly into the network. Uh, and then third, you're seeing it, uh, unfortunately, with third parties. Uh, you know, more and more of these cyber attacks are coming indirectly through third parties, which is why it's so important that companies start to build these, these cyber risk protocols in place. Yeah, as if we didn't already have to worry about employees within a company not being properly educated as to the use of non-authorized devices, clicking on suspicious emails, stuff like that. I mean, that still goes on, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. and, and companies are doing a better job starting to build their uh, the, the defensible walls around their organization, but it's harder when you go beyond your organization's four walls, that's when it really gets tricky because now you've got to worry about your suppliers, your distributors, your resellers, your partners. Um, and now more than ever, that potential uh, entryway is becoming more exposed to, yeah. to, to yeah. cyber criminals. So how has the pandemic exacerbated the problem? Wow. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has amplified the issue. And they've, they've amplified the issue for, for really three reasons. One, in the weeks after the pandemic started to have a global impact on supply chains, companies had to very quickly rally to bring in alternative suppliers and partners. As a result of that, they had to uh, expedite their onboarding process and cyber risk was quick to be put to the side so that they could continue operations. Not and so I much due diligence, right? Let's that's right. right. The second aspect of that though, is they also have more of their workforce working remotely. Uh, companies have done a good job of putting protocols in place, but what you've done now is you've now multiplied the number of entry points, um, whereas companies were, uh, had all of their employees or most of their employees centrally located. So I think those two have a pretty profound impact right now um, as a result of the pandemic on companies. Mm -hmm. So how does a company assess its own risk and own potential for cyber threats? And what type of review or what type of, of, of procedure is required in order to get a grip on just how open you are to these things happening? Yeah, I think uh, at least for the, the way that um, companies can do this is they can do it in, in one of a few ways. First and foremost, uh, most mature companies have a, a chief information security officer. Uh, if they don't, then it usually falls within the um, confines of the technology organization. And they need to make sure that they're uh, doing all of the necessary protocols to protect the organization. And it's not just about uh, logins, passwords, it's around making sure you don't have mal the ability to have malware installed on individual laptops. You have to make sure that your vendors uh, and other third parties that interact with you don't have access to uh, computers where they can put malware and, so, uh, and software on there. Uh, you have to make sure that you properly educate your, your employees on phishing uh, and, and how the, the phishing email scams have, have gotten much more creative um, over the last few years. Uh, you know, it, 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 overall, you have to stay one step ahead of criminals. Uh, yeah. But in addition to, again, as I say, protecting your house, 
you also now need to look outside your house and your neighbors. And those neighbors are your, your suppliers. And you need mm-hmm. to make sure their houses are in order. And there's proper protocols to make sure what you can do to ensure that uh, uh, your, your, your supplier's houses are all in order. So what type of what type of declaration or what type of statement do you want from your outside third parties that would reassure you that they are just as careful about cyber risk protection as you are? Yeah, I think it's actually about, it, it's four key steps that, that I would like uh, from, from my third parties. First and foremost, I'd like to understand that cyber security is a, is, is a priority for them. So I want to see it from, uh, you know, we joke it takes a village. Well, in this case, it takes a company. And I, I want to see from the C-suite down to the individual level that there are policies and procedures in place to protect the organization. The second thing I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, companies to start uh, creating risk thresholds, meaning they should understand what uh, uh, is an acceptable form of risk. For example, what what can a third party have access to and why? And once they document this, then the, the third important component is really to make sure that you consider the individual risk factors associated with it. For example, uh, you know, what access does certain uh, providers have? What third party data would be available to them? Should it be available to them? Uh, and, and then, I'd say the very last thing, it's something, Bob, that you and I have spoken about before when we talked about just uh, in general, what can uh, uh, compliance and third party and supplier risk onboarding, what can we do better uh, and where does the industry have to go? Well, the same holds true for cyber risk and that is monitoring. Continuous due diligence has to be uh, taken in the cyber risk environment. It's not good enough to do a basic assessment, put the, uh, the document in the drawer and wait a year or two until a renewal comes up and then having to re-revise and, and uh, uh, review their cyber protocols. Uh, yeah. I think what we have to do now is get into the habit of continuously monitoring their cyber risk protocols and what their policies and procedures are for protecting themselves and for that matter, the domino effect of the entire supply chain. Because the nature of the risk changes too. I mean, the strategies that cyber thieves employ are always changing. They're trying That's to right. stay one step ahead of the uh, of the measures that are meant to keep them out. So I guess, what do you have to do? You have to keep continually get together with your third parties and review, like, what is the state of our cyber risk now? What are cyber thieves do? I mean, would it be a series of like regular meetings? Would it be constant daily communications? How do you stay on top of how this whole landscape is changing? Yeah, one of the best ways to do it is to leverage uh, cyber risk ratings. So cyber risk ratings are a very quick uh, outside in review of a company's cyber risk protocols Mm -hmm. and being able to understand how well that they have uh, protected themselves. Uh, And again, it's an outside in, so it doesn't require a lot of uh, work on the company's behalf and it will enable uh, a, a company to have a very quick uh, understanding of how that risk profile has changed based on changes in the risk ratings. You're so suggesting, right. you're suggesting it sounds like the quantification of risk is very important. It's not just this general feeling like we are all out to prevent cyber attacks. It sounds like you're tying it to some very specific, if not numbers, some very specific actions that all That's the parties right. are taking. That's absolutely right. Long yeah. gone are the days where you can just throw a survey or a questionnaire over the wall and, and mm-hmm. ask them to fill it out and then put it in a drawer. And a year later, you revisit that questionnaire to see if anything's changed. You now need to be continuously monitoring them, just like we talk about for all forms of risk, whether that's financial risk, credit risk, compliance risk, uh, uh, screening. We, we have to make sure that cyber risk is one of those ongoing monitoring uh, capabilities. What kind of risk expertise should a company have in its procurement organization? I mean, you talked about chief security officers. Other companies call them chief risk officers. They exist at generally at a higher level in the C-suite. How much expertise and knowledge should be, should be resident within procurement? You know, it's a great question, Bob. I think first and foremost, what procurement has to do is make sure that during their onboarding process, 
that first and foremost, that they have a risk, that, that they've added cyber risk as one of the components of their risk assessment. Having the level of detail and how you interact with your CISO, your technology office um, is all critical. But having it at least as a component so that if their risk profile from a cyber risk perspective changes, the overall risk of profile should change. That's number one. Number two is making sure you have super highways, not just bridges, but super highways of connection between the procurement organization and the information security organization. The procurement organization does not need resident experts sitting within their walls. They just need to have that super information highway between their IT organization so that they know exactly how to do what we talked about earlier, which was understand what your risk thresholds are, understanding what the risk factors are, and then understanding how to continuously monitor and what changes I should make once I see a change in the risk profile. Those types of information is critical but you do not need to have the level of expertise within the procurement shop as long as you're asking the right questions. We've spoken endlessly when it comes down to overall supply chain visibility, when it comes down to supply chain compliance and the need for multi-tier visibility to get all the way through the sub-tiers. I assume the same thing occurs when it, the same concern exists with cyber threats. I mean, do you have to go up to multiple tiers? Do you have to have that, that, that kind of visibility of compliance all the way up the supply chain? In order to be fully protected, the more knowledge you have and the deeper into the secondary and tertiary forms of the supply chain you go, then yes, that's what you need to do. We're seeing companies start to mandate now that their tier one suppliers are, suge- are stating that they hold their tier one suppliers accountable. So mm-hmm. now you've gone two tiers down. And then we've seen some companies starting to mandate that of their sub-tier com- suppliers as well, especially those that are critical suppliers uh, of, the, of the supply chain. And going back to your question earlier about the pandemic, understanding that single source of failure has become so important uh, in, in, in the last six months since the pandemic struck. Yeah, well, to a certain extent, companies have had a wake up call all year long in many ways because of the pandemic. But Brian Alster of Dunn and Bradstreet, you've given us a really good wake up call, speaking specifically to the issue of cyber risk and supply chains in these very difficult times. So great to talk to you as always. Thank you very much for being with me today. Thank you, Rob.